So let's have another session of your email security appliance. And in this particular session, we'll be talking about something called as host access table. Okay. Now what is this? This actually plays a major role inside your email security appliance. And it actually defines that what are the users who are allowed to send the message to your organization. So let's say, for example, that I do have this internet and this is being connected to my email security appliance. And furthermore, this email security appliance is connected to an exchange box, an exchange server inside my organization. Let's say to this exchange server has a mail record, exchange.cisco.com, just for example. And to that, my internal user, Bob, is being connected. Now what, let's see that what actually your host access table defines. Host access table is being segmented into two things. One is called as a sender group and another one is called as mail flow policy or denoted as MFP. MFP. By default now, there are three sender groups which are being available. Okay, which also works on the sender based reputation score. Those are your blacklist, second is suspect list, and third is unknown list. Okay. Now these are already being created inside the email security appliance and for that there is a sender based reputation score which has been defined already which has a range. So the overall range of SBRS is from minus 10 to plus 10. Okay. And this is being segmented among these three particular sender groups. Blacklist has from minus 10 to minus 4. Then from suspect list minus 3 to minus 1. And then from minus 1 to plus 10 comes under your whitelist sender group. So unknown list. And now let's say that you have your own friend, you have a business partner, you have a client who has a reputation score and you want to allow him into your organization. So for that, who have a high reputation score and you want to, st you want to allow him into your organization. So for that custom, you can create one more sender group that is called as whitelist. Okay. And now I can manipulate what are written over here and I can change from minus one to let's suppose plus four and from plus four to plus 10, I can assign to this whitelist sender group and I can say that whosoever the users who are coming under this range of sender group, SBRS score will be allowed into the organization. Now, when I define the sender group, I have not defined that what will be the particular action that will be taken upon this sender group. So let's say I have the blacklist sender group. So I'll direct action which I'm going to deploy is nothing but your mail flow policy. And the action I'm going to take is drop or either block that I'm going to drop that particular email. Going forward with suspect list, the action which I'm going to take is throttle. Throttle means Throttle stands for rate limitation. That means I'm allowing or I'm limiting the rate of incoming emails into my organization. Let's say I can say that you are allowed to only send 25 requests or you are allowed to only send 25 email per day or per hour. I can limit those particular rate for that user, for that user. And the third is unknown list for which except is the action which is by default being taken and for the whitelist I can define the action called as trusted. But now the question comes over here is that whenever there is an email which is being coming inside the organization, how it is being coming into these particular sender groups and then how the action is being taken. So let's say that there is a user, random user ABC who is trying to send an email. He sends the email, email has received by the email security appliance, ESA now gonna talk to something called as sender base database. And this database is being handled by one and only Telos. So ABC 
has let's suppose have a repetition score of minus 2.7 as soon as the email is being arrived to the email security appliance he gonna contact to the tellos he gonna ask to the sender base that i have a user who has a repetition score of minus 2.7 what should i do with that my sender base database will reply so i'll change my ink my sender base database is gonna reply to him saying that okay the reputation score of this user is minus 2.7 and as soon as my email security appliance sees this reputation score he directly allocates that particular user to the suspect list and the mail flow policy the action which will be taken over here is throttle that means i am imposing certain rate limitations to that particular email now another criteria let's say what if that there is a user or there is a ip address okay there is a ip address who is a newborn baby that ip address has never flown any kind of email any kind of traffic over to the global in that particular case those ip addresses are being considered as none so if you want to open up the option for whitelist what you will see you will see a settings that are getting opened up and within those settings there will be one option that include the ip of none that means now i can say that inside the whitelist those who are the ip address let's suppose there for example an ip address 1.1.1.1 it's a brand new ip address just came into the market and sending the first email kindly include those ip address those who are brand new and does not contain any sbr score sender base reputation score kindly include those ip address into the whitelist sender group accept it and trust it this is an example which i have given as per as per cisco best practices they always says that whatever the ip address who are brand new and are trying to flow the email content over to the globe kindly always choose the suspect list for them because these are suspicious ip addresses of the random mail transfer agent okay you can't fully trust them but you can't fully drop them or deny them so you will accept them into the suspect list sender group kindly do the same thing include the ip address of none check this particular box the user will be dropped inside this the ip address of that mail transfer agent will come into the sender group and the respective mail flow policy of the throttle will be imposed on that so this is how your sender group and the mail flow policy works inside your email security appliance now whatever we have studied over here is all for the incoming email okay but what about when my user bob wants to send the email to the outside world towards the random mail transfer agent for that there is another sender group which is being created so i'll create that sender group over here somewhere i'll draw a margin okay that sender group is called as relay list and the respective mail flow policy is called as relayed that means whatever the email bob wants to send to the outside world throughout the esa kindly relay it directly no need to perform any check no need to do any validations directly send the email to the outside world that means now according to your email security appliance there are two types of listeners which are available one is called as public listener and another one is called as private listener public means whenever i am having an email from the outside world towards the email security appliance those particular email will always be getting listened on the public interface okay or the public listener and whenever my internal user from the organization wants to send an email outside those will be getting listened up into the private listener so that means i can say that your host access table okay also known as hat hat is equals to public plus private because we are creating a host access table 
for all the public listeners where the sender group as blacklist, suspect list and unknown list and white list has been defined and we are also defined a host access table for the private listener in which my relay list comes into the picture which have a mail flow policy called as relayed. Okay. Now I hope the complete concept of the host access table, the public and the private listeners are being clear. Okay. Soon we're going to create another video for the next topic. Till then, take care. See ya. Bye-bye. Have a great day, guys.